Everyone watching this video has probably heard of the Maurian reforms. During the Kimbrick War, when the Kimbri, Teutonias, and Ambronis migrated from what is today southern Denmark to the Alps, they came into contact with the Roman Republic and a war ensued. Rome's military, stagnant since the start of the 2nd century BC, was unable to stand up, and after a series of defeats, Gaius Marius instituted a series of changes to make the military more effective. And I think the Wikipedia page actually does an excellent summation of what we think this was. It says the following. Marius proposed radical alterations with the intention of creating a more professional, permanent, and dynamic Roman military. The reforms revolutionized the Roman military machine, introducing the standardized legionary, the cohort unit, and drastically altered the property and weaponry requirements for recruitment. The reforms also put the responsibility of supplying and managing an army in the hand of the general. Marius also granted citizenship and land to all Roman soldiers. As a consequence, these reforms had a significant impact on the military supremacy of Rome as well as unintentionally contributing to the social and political disruption of the late Republic. The problem, though, is that the consensus of historians is actually against this. Now, Marius did institute some standardization of equipment, and he did give the legions their famous eagles, but it's now believed that the idea of an overarching reform to the legion structure is incorrect. Another way of putting that is that conceiving of this as a paradigm shift in how the Roman military was structured and how it works, attributable to Marius, is probably wrong. So, let's talk about this. Probably the most important thing to cover is that the historians who came up with the idea, like Theodore Mommsen, were working in the late 19th and very early 20th centuries, and they attributed a series of alterations to the Roman military to Marius, and the idea stuck. But the idea that there was some sort of large-scale reform has been seriously called into question. Supposedly, there was a crisis in recruitment, the idea being that, until this time, land was required to serve in the military, and that Marius removed this qualification, resulting in mass recruitment. However, this idea was demolished in 1962 when Peter Brunt published The Army and the Land in the Roman Revolution, effectively demonstrating during and before this period that there really wasn't any sort of change in recruitment patterns, and those patterns don't really change until the middle of the first century AD, in the imperial period. Essentially, the land requirement does not seem to have been a factor well before Marius supposedly abolished it. And, actually, in the Republican period, recruitment had already expanded beyond Italy to the provinces already. So then, why the problem with recruitment during the Kimbrick War? The answer, as argued convincingly by Nathan Rosenstein in his book Rome at War, Farms, Families, and Death in the Middle Republic, is that this was probably a result of exhaustion, in part from the conquest of Iberia, so it is correct to look at Maurice's recruitment of the landless poor as something which disavows land, but we need to understand that this was probably an emergency measure, something which, those same scholars point out, was not unknown to earlier periods of Roman history, and that this refers specifically to Marius's own army, not the Roman army as a whole. The primary sources we do have for this period, like Sallust, don't make any mention of legal changes to recruitment patterns. Now, this is not to say that we don't have sources which attribute quite a lot to him, but they are from the very late 1st century AD, about 200 years after Marius lived, and they draw on parallels to Greek semi-legendary leaders like Draken or Lycurgus, to which the basics of Athenian and Spartan laws are attributed. Marius was viewed as this great reformer because he was looked at as having saved Rome during the Kimbrick War, and because there was a conscious effort among later Roman historians to classicize him and make Marius into a principal reformer in the spirit of people like Draken or Lycurgus. Plutarch, for example, tells us that Marius modified the Pilum, and this is possibly correct. And we also have sources like Frontinus telling us that his army was trained to love hardship, to carry their own equipment with no baggage train, and as the joke goes, they were called Marius' mules. So these sources generally come from after the period when Marius lived. And the statements they make are similar enough that professionals recognize they probably go back to the same sources from the period of the Kimbrick War. But 
because all we have are really these later sources, we have to treat them with caution. The fewer sources you have surviving, the more closely you read them, and you do so with the understanding the primary sources are not necessarily lying outright, but neither are they telling the truth outright. That's not how primary sources work. All sources are, to a degree, vague, and we have to be careful with what we take from them. Now, archaeologically, we don't have any real alterations to the Roman pilum from this period. We do know that he introduced the eagles, although we don't know how widespread this actually was, and the joke about Marius' mules appears to be, in the context of the sources, really a joke aimed specifically at the army that Marius raised, not the Roman army in general, at least not in this period. Now, for the Republican period, we have two really excellent sources for two different periods on the military. We have Polybius, who informs us about the military in the 3rd century BC, and we have the writings of Julius Caesar from the middle of the 1st century BC. Now, outside of those two, for a period of about 200 years, or maybe a bit less, we don't really have very much. Outside of this, we have scraps from contemporary sources which do indicate that the military structure was changing. Legates appear, as do cohorts, and there doesn't really appear to have been a set term limit yet, and it doesn't necessarily appear during Caesar's time either, which calls into question Marius' implementation of this, so we have a period where the structure of the military was changing. We have little to no sources actually from that period, and then we have sources attributing a great deal to Marius from about 100 to 200 years after he was supposed to have done these things. So my point is that as historians have taken this into account and reevaluated the sources, they've realized that those sources were more problematic than those sources were at one time thought to be. And outside of some small things like instituting eagles as standards, we don't really have that much to go on. So... Was Marius responsible for reforming the military to such a degree that we should talk about a mass alteration called the Marian reforms? No, probably not. But the military was changing, and Marius was in the middle of all of it, and later sources and later historians attribute more to him than is probably justified. Of course, further study may reverse or further complicate this picture, but as of right now, the cutting edge of Republican history has done away with this paradigm and it's done away with it since at least the 1980s. So as always, thank you for watching this one, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you're all looking forward to the next video.